What up, what up, this is Patrick Hayes. In this video, I wanna teach you how to tune in to the big picture and feel the ultimate freedom. Because waiting for you in the big picture is the ultimate freedom. It's not just about tuning in to the big picture. It's about balancing the macro and the micro. And the reason I named it this is because most people probably have to step back from the micro a little bit and step into the big picture so that they can start um, embedding some, some higher frequencies, some, some grander essences that can smooth out their life and make things more beautiful and more flowing in their life. So in this video, if you stick around to the end, not only am I gonna explain how you can start tuning into the big picture, how you can start balancing macro and micro, but I'm gonna explain a little bit what happens when you actually start doing that. So to start off, I wanna talk about macro and micro. So you could think of macro and micro in their extremes as like, the ascetic meditator on the macro sense and like the uh, like frantic business person on the micro sense. While there's a place maybe, especially for the macro side to maybe go into that ascetic place, if we wanna be truly rooted here and existing in this planet and we want our life to have purpose here, there, there's, a, there's a kind of merging that I feel like needs to happen, right? And while it's extremely important to go meditate and touch those bigger states, I feel like if we want our life to have purpose, if we want to live out a physical experience, live a physical experience to the fullest, then it's about merging these two as opposed to just staying in one of these states. And it's quite obvious why you wouldn't want to stay into the micro state. Because if you're in the micro state so much, um, every little thing becomes such a big deal that it drives you crazy. And you can really get caught trying to make everything work for you all the time, trying to make every little detail fit. And the devil's in the details. If you get too caught into that, it's basically just like you're in this perpetual state of suffering, this perpetual state of needing things to be a certain way and fiddling with it. But the solution to that is stepping back into the big picture, seeing the big picture, getting into meditative states that open you up to something that's way more beautiful and way more vast. And then that gives you this perspective that all these little things that you're so worried about are really not that big of a deal, you know? But if you spend too much time in this big state, and you kind of separate yourself from society, then eventually physical life loses its purpose. You're like, well, what's even the point? You might as well just evaporate into the ethers. Like, what's the point of living a physical life, right? And then, you know, unless you're living in some sort of ashram, you lose the capacity to take care of yourself. And so you end up like weighing on somebody else. So, you know, if, if you just meditate all the time, how are you gonna pay your bills? How are you going to clean your house? How are you gonna do all this stuff? Either someone else is gonna do it for you, or you're going to basically have to live in some ashram somewhere where still like, you know, somebody might be doing it for you also. Now I'm not knocking ashrams. I'm not saying that's like a bad thing to do. But what I'm saying is that if you want your physical life to still have purpose, you want to still be in the world, then it's about merging these two states. So how do you merge these two states? Well, it's really just as simple as budgeting our time, right? Spending certain amount of time in the macro space and getting in touch with that. And then also making sure we spend a certain amount of time in the micro space. Now, just about everyone could probably define within themselves wh whether they're leaning to one side or the other and how they could balance themselves out a little bit more by getting a little bit more grounded or opening up a little bit more to, um, to grace and flow and some, some higher states of being. But what I like to do is I spend a certain amount of time out in nature, connecting in with the big feelings embedding the long waves, so be like feeling the mountains, feeling the, uh, the stars, feeling the planets, really getting, getting access to these grander, more celestial uh, vibrations, right? And, and, and experiencing these things. And then looking at it from the big picture, realizing that this life is just this tiny little speck in this like infinite sea of experience, right? And that all of my worries of the day, all these little things that I'm working on that may or may not be working, all these like hopes and wishes I have from within like the physical sphere is really insignificant. And it gives me this perspective that, um, that, that makes things more flowing because I can, I can let things go. It's not that big of a deal. So it's a great way of blowing off steam from the day. You know, you just let it all go because from the big picture, everything feels so beautiful and you're connected into this bliss that it's like, it's not a big deal, you know? And this can be the temptation to stay in this space. A lot of people can be tempted not to ever go back to the world. I mean, once you can start feeling these like really vast feelings, it's like, why would you even want to like get into the rat race again? Why would you even want to participate there? And a lot of people do. They just run off into the mountains and disappear. And 
you know, maybe that's right for them. I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with that. But um, I would imagine for the most of us is that, you know, if we're here on this physical planet, we want to experience physical life, right? It's not about just, you know, escaping back to the ethers. We can do that when we die, right? It's about experiencing the physical life. But there's this vast power that comes from this like great, huge, expansive state. So how can we bring that into our everyday life to smooth things out and make things more harmonious, right? Now, the other side of it is that, you know, all the skills that we build, like um, being able to do logistics, being able to think critically, being able to evaluate things, all the skills that we develop for um, navigating through the world, all these things aren't pointless. Like when we're develop these, developing these things, like on a soul level, we're actually developing um, like skills that our soul will be able to keep after death. So the physical world isn't pointless. There's a point for being here. But what happens is when we get too stuck in that micro, it becomes extremely difficult, right? There's no flow, there's no magic, there's no beauty to life anymore when every little detail becomes so important that it makes or breaks our day. So the idea is to really kind of manage both of those. So spend time in both spaces, spend time working on your worldly skills. It's, it's important to spend time on worldly skills, but then also spend time opening up into the vastness of things. And then eventually start trying to merge these two things. So what I like to do is I like to get into this very big space before I do things, right? Get into a beautiful, vast, open space where I'm connected. And I feel connected to everything and I feel like I'm one with everything and I feel everything open up. And then what I do is I go through my daily life and I do my best to make not just the everyday goal that I have of maybe finishing the video or, um, or creating my schedule or cleaning my house. I make the goal, not just that micro goal, but I'll also the macro goal of keeping that essence of the macro with me while I'm doing those things. So in other words, I work to not sacrifice that big essence by the need to finish or make something work in the physical world. Because this is where people slip out. This is where I slip out, is I'm trying to get something done and maybe I feel like there's a deadline or creating a deadline for myself. Maybe there truly is a deadline. And in order to get it done, I have to sacrifice and say, you know what? Okay, I just got to like get in there and lose connection to that bigger aspect, to that greater essence, to my meditative state, because I just got to get this done or this is more important. And this is like when, when you have this macro sense with you, you have this beauty and this vastness with you, and then you kind of like choke it out of yourself because you get too caught in the micro and you like lose perspective. The idea is to be like this walking paradox where you have both the big perspective and the small perspective and you unify them together. And you can see different masters that walk around like this. You maybe have had snippets or at least be able to imagine this. There's this graceful expression through the world and you can do dishes, you can work um, in the micro world, you can figure things out, but from this super balanced, graceful space. And actually you're way more effective when you're doing it from that space too, because there's not this like, like do or die attachment that you have to everything. So you're more willing to be flexible. It's like if things aren't working, if the deadline's not working, or if uh, you know something is like giving you trouble, it's like, okay, well, it's not, it's not a big deal because you know in the long run, none of this stuff really matters. But I'm gonna keep showing up. I'm not gonna check out. I'm gonna just keep showing up and keep giving love to it and keep expressing it. And this is how you really become, say like in this world, but not of it, right? You're, of, you're something way bigger, but you're you know, expressing in this small world with that bigness and it becomes a really beautiful expression then. So the idea is, again, you spend time in both spaces. Go out, spend time in nature, meditate, spend time really getting in touch with these you know, beautiful experiences. And I'll do more videos on how to really tune in and how to actually do that. But then you take this space and you start bringing it back to your everyday life, right? And the way to do that again is to not get caught in the micro goal of getting this thing done or making this thing work for you. But actually, the goal is to get that thing done while remaining in a state of bigness, right? So you have a macro goal and a micro goal at the same time when you're walking around in your micro world. And there's no better training ground for expressing more of who you truly are, embedding and becoming 
this grander version of yourself than this micro world that can so easily pull you into it and get you in this like push pull needy wanting things to happen a certain way kind of space because the micro world is going to want to pull you in there's bells and there's whistles and there's all this noise and it's going to want to captivate you and pull you into all that stuff but actually if you can retain this big perspective while you're in that space then you're really really stepping into a much more powerful grand version of yourself because it's a lot easier to just check out and when you're alone in your ashram be in this big space but what really is the true test of you in your evolution is being able to take that big space and still stand within that and be within that when there's all these things in the world all these stresses and dramas going on in the world right to actually walk from that higher space so that's all i have for you today thanks so much for tuning in if you have any questions about this you want me to go more into detail about anything that I mentioned in this video, please put that in the comments below. And if you found this useful and you think there's somebody else that might find this useful, please share it with them. I would really appreciate that. So thanks for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe, and I will talk to you next time. One love.